After days of constant fighting, on June 21, 1944, for the first time since the landing, the men of the 4th and 2nd Marine Divisions, had the opportunity to take some rest. The day passed in reorganization and regrouping, in preparation for the attack on the rugged, mountainous terrain of central Saipan, scheduled to begin, in the early morning of June 22. The attack was to begin at 6 a.m., after massive artillery preparation. The 2nd Marine Division, was to advance along the northern slopes of Mount Tipo Pale, and proceed towards 2,743 meters high, Mount Tepochau, in front of them. While the 4th Marine Division, would move to the southwest of Mount Tepochau, to take the valley and hill 600, just north of Margisien Bay. While the Marines prepared for an upcoming attack, the 27th Infantry Division, continued with the slow advance, through the caves and ravines of Nafutan Point, clearing the pockets, of fierce Japanese resistance. By the end of the day, the division received orders to pull back two regiments, and move them behind Marine divisions as the reserve, leaving only the 105th Regiment, with the task to clear Nafutan Point, and protect a Sleto airfield. The attack on central Saipan, began according to schedule, at 6 a.m. on June 22, 1944, after 10 minutes long artillery preparation, by all artillery batteries on the island. The 4th Marine Division, began the attack, with 24th Marines, advancing on the right flank, 25th Marines on the left, and 23rd Marines in reserve. Attacking along the coast of Margisien Bay, the 24th Marines moved forward, making steady progress, until they ran on rugged, almost impassable terrain. Despite this, it didn't prevent the 24th Marines, from reaching their assigned objective. On the right flank, the 25th Marines, advanced in the narrow zone of action, which allowed them to attack with all battalions in a column. In skirmishes with scattered resistance, and isolated machine gun emplacements, leading company, Company K, lost three commanders in a single day. In the afternoon, well-placed Japanese positions, on the hill slopes, stopped the 25th Marines' attack. As the division front widened, the gap between units appeared. Therefore, the 23rd Marines, were called upon from reserve, to take the position between the 24th and 25th Marines. Meanwhile, the 2nd Marine Division, attacked in conjunction with the 4th Marine Division. On the left flank, along the shore, the 2nd Marines, remained in their positions, to prevent overstretching the division line. The 6th and 8th Marines advanced, constantly observed from Japanese positions on hilltops as they progressed. The 8th Marines, initially moved very fast, until they faced heavy terrain on the slopes at Mount Tepochau, covered with cliffs, and dense foliage, which limited visibility, to only a few meters. The 6th Marines, made a good advance at first, facing limited and isolated pockets of resistance, before reaching the eastern slopes of Mount Tepo Pale. The slopes, and heavily wooded ravines, offered well-protected defensive positions, allowing Japanese to lay down a covering fire between the emplacements. By nightfall, the division's advance stalled, and the Marines dug in for the unusually quiet night. During the next few days, a fierce battle will rage on the harsh terrain of central Saipan, with the Marines trying to break through the Japanese defensive line. The difficulties that American troops will face, can best be illustrated by the names given by Americans, to places such as Death Valley, Purple Heart Ridge, and Hell's Pocket. The rugged mountain terrain of central Saipan, gave another opportunity to the Japanese, to organize a well-prepared defensive line, on which they hoped, to stop the American advance. With most of their commanders killed or wounded, by that time, the Japanese units had ceased to function as cohesive formations, and were now only loose collections, of scattered units. The remnants of the 43rd Division, 
stood against the 2nd Marine and 27th Infantry Division, while the elements of the 47 Independent Mixed Brigade, and various other units, faced the 4th Marine Division. The remaining parts of the 47 Independent Mixed Brigade, anti-aircraft units, and airfield personnel held Nafutan Point. On June 23, the 165th and 106th Infantry Regiments, of the 27th Division, relieved the 25th Marines, taking the position between two Marine Divisions, while the 105th Army Regiment, remained at the south, tasked to clear Nafutan Point, and protect a Sleeto airfield. The objective of the 27th Infantry Division, was to clear the eastern slopes of Mount Taipochow, with the 106th and 165th Regiment, advancing up the valley and the ridge that runs parallel, known as Death Valley, and Purple Heart Ridge. On the same day, June 23, the first P-47 fighters of the 19th Fighter Squadron, and two flights of P-61 Black Widows, of the 6th Night Fighter Squadron, the 7th Air Force, took off from escort carriers, some 100 kilometers off Saipan, and arrived at Asleto Airfield. For the rest of the battle, the P-47s provided close air support, to the ground forces, being much more effective in taking off from Saipan, on short sorties, than the planes from aircraft carriers. American troops, made only a few gains on June 23, as they faced increased Japanese resistance. The 2nd Marine Division, limited its activities only to clear isolated pockets of resistance, on the slopes of Mount Tipo Pale. The units of the 27th Division, became mixed up as they moved into position over the rough terrain. Once they launched the attack, they made almost no advance, as they ran into the Japanese strongpoint at Hell's Pocket, and a series of emplacements, on Purple Heart Ridge. The only significant success of the day, was a seizure at Hill 600, by the 23rd Marines. With Hill 600 in their hands, Marines had an unobstructed observation of Kagman Peninsula, and a good starting position for further advance. The following day, the 2nd Marines, moved towards Garapan, reaching the southern edge of the town. In the center, the 27th Infantry Division, was still stuck in the same place as the previous day, failing to make any breakthrough, while the 4th Marine Division, moved on Kagman Peninsula, securing about one-third of it. While the Marines advanced steadily, the slow progress of the 27th Division, made General Holland Smith, commander of all ground forces on Saipan, furious. On June 24, he relieved Major General Ralph Smith, from his command of the 27th Infantry Division, replacing him with Major General Sanderford Jarman, commander of Saipan Garrison Force. General Jarman, remained in this position until June 28, when Major General George Greiner, arrived from Hawaii, to take command of the 27th Infantry Division. However, the reality, and the main reason for the slow progress, was that the terrain of the 27th Infantry Division zone, was much rougher, and the resistance, was tougher than the one Marines faced. On June 25, the 8th Marines, succeeded in securing the top of Mount Taipochow. The 4th Marine Division, made good progress on Kagman Peninsula, facing almost no resistance. In the center, the 27th Division, under a new commander, still had problems making significant progress, despite gaining one-third of Purple Heart Ridge, and advancing through Death Valley. Heavy terrain, and lack of roads led to logistical problems. Supplies to the front line had to be brought on foot. Therefore, on June 26, there was little forward movement along the three-division front, as the Americans used the day to resupply, and reorganize the forward units. Throughout the day, both sides get engaged, in an artillery duel. Meanwhile, on the Futon Point, the stalemate continued. The 105th Infantry Regiment, still had trouble with stubborn Japanese resistance on ridges, cliffs, and thick jungle, which reduced the combat to very close range. 
Also, the 105th Regiment had no artillery support, as all artillery was engaged in support of the main thrust north. Moving slowly, supported only by mortars and anti-aircraft cannons, which fired directly on the cave entrances, infantry cleared one by one pocket of resistance. Scattered defenders, hidden in the caves, suffered from water and food shortages, while the mortar and naval artillery fire, from land and sea prevented any movement on the point. On June 26, the Japanese commanding officer on the Futon Point, issued the order to his surviving troops to carry out a breakthrough, and move north to link up with the main force, he believed to be on Hill 500. The Japanese force, of approximately 500 men, sneaked undetected through the thin line of the 105th Regiment, and moved through the night, until they stumbled into the Army Command post. After a short skirmish, the Japanese force dispersed, and moved further north, striking a Sleto airfield. The attack on the airfield, caused confusion on the American side. However, the prompt reaction of airfield personnel, anti-aircraft units, mechanics and other supporting troops, pushed the Japanese force back, before they managed to do any significant damage, to airfield installations. The Japanese continued moving towards Hill 500, where they were finally destroyed, in savagery fought close combat, by the 25th Marines, stationed in the area as a reserve. The following day, June 27, the 105th Infantry Regiment, moved in, to finally clear Nafutan Point. They reached the southern tip without much trouble, finding only scattered resistance and retrieving 850 dead Japanese, in addition to those killed the previous night. In the north, with the loss of Mount Taipochao, the situation for the Japanese defenders, has become desperate. Lieutenant General Yoshitsugu Sato, commander of the Japanese army troops on Saipan, could not comprehend how the Americans continued to move forward, despite the best efforts of his troops. By that time, the Japanese force on the island, exhausted by constant fighting and counterattacks, suffered heavy casualties, with most regiments having felt to battalion size or less, with virtually no remaining tanks or artillery, and with many more supporting units, completely wiped out. On June 27, the Japanese troops, began preparing the final defensive line, from Tanapang on the northeast coast, following a road running across the island. Meanwhile, the 4th Marine Division, encouraged by their swift and easy move, across Kagman Peninsula, continued pushing the Japanese defenders, advancing well ahead of the 27th Infantry Division, along the east coast. By the end of the day, Marines had to stop, to wait for the army troops to catch up. Over the next two days, the Marine divisions, had to stop because of accumulated fatigue, and waited for the 27th Infantry Division, to catch up with their advance. While the Marines patrolled, fighting small skirmishes along the front line, and prepared for further action, the Army troops, fought their way through Death Valley, Purple Heart Ridge, and Hell's Pocket, against a determined enemy, who would rather die than give up. In accomplishing this heavy assignment, the 27th Infantry Division, lost almost 1,400 men, in a week-long struggle. On the evening of June 30th, the Japanese began pulling back north, to a new defensive line. The Americans followed them closely, clearing pockets of resistance along the way. The first day of July, passed in preparation for the American attack, and small probes on the Japanese line, and on July 2nd, the attack northward began. The 2nd Marines moved to Garapan. In house-to-house -house fighting, through rubbles of the destroyed town, Marines finally cleared Garapan by July 4th. On July 3rd, the rest of the 2nd Marine Division, was pulled back out of line, and placed into reserve. On July 4th, American divisions, took huge chunks of terrain, as Japanese defense crumbled. In the following days, the unstoppable American advance, continued with ease. The 27th Infantry Division, reinforced with the 105th Regiment, 
Now advancing on more favorable terrain, made swift progress capturing Tanapang, on July 5th. While on the same day, the 4th Marine Division, took Hill 221, penetrating the middle of the new Japanese defensive line. General Sato, faced the grim reality, of inevitable defeat. The fate of Saipan was sealed, and he and his decimated troops, could do nothing to stop the advancing Americans. While the Americans, steadily pushed the defenders north, and when it seemed the battle was nearing the end, an event of epic proportion, was about to begin. Familiar with the experiences of previous battles, General Smith, knew that the time was ripe, for a Banzai attack. He duly warned, all units to be alert, and paid a personal visit on July 6, to General Greiner, of the 27th Infantry Division, to stress the likelihood of an attack, coming down the coastline, on the flat ground of the Tanapag Plain. General Greiner, assured him that the division, was ready for any Japanese attack. Meanwhile, before dawn on July 7, General Sato, now cornered in his sixth and last command post, gathered approximately 4,000 surviving troops, and ordered a final Banzai charge. The Japanese attack began at 4.45 am, and the first blow, fell on the isolated position, held by the 1st Battalion, of the 105th Infantry Regiment. Wild hand-to-hand -hand fighting, soon erupted, while the army troops, tried to fight off the attackers, who just kept coming and coming. Soon the 1st Battalion positions, were overrun by thousands of Japanese, who just moved forward in their unstoppable charge, reaching the position held by the 3rd Battalion, 105th Regiment, shortly after. In the 3rd Battalion zone, the onslaught continued. Unlike the 1st Battalion, the position held by the 3rd, was on higher ground, so the defense was easier, as the Japanese had to climb uphill. The men of the 3rd Battalion, held their line. However, elements of the attacking Japanese, bypassed infantry positions, reaching the 3rd Battalion, of 10th Marine Artillery, at 5.15 am. Battery H, and headquarters, were hit hardest. Lightly armed artillerymen, fought fiercely against numerous enemies, but eventually, the Japanese pressure became too great, so outnumbered survivors had to pull back. Battery I was next in line attacked, and the howitzer's crew pulled back to neighboring Battery G, where the Japanese attack, was finally stopped. The fierce attacking force, didn't move as a cohesive unit. One column, reached the command post of the 105th Infantry Regiment, where they were stopped by headquarters personnel, cooks and other regimental supporting staff. The attack, finally lost momentum at 11.30 am, but fighting and clearing the area, continued all day. During this, the largest Japanese Banzai charge in the Pacific War, the 105th Infantry Regiment, had 512 wounded, and 406 men killed, including Lieutenant Colonel William O'Brien, commander of the 1st Battalion, who was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor, for his actions during that fateful night. The 10th Marine Artillery, suffered 45 killed and 82 Marines wounded. General Sato, didn't live to see the result of the attack. After giving orders, for one last fanatical Banzai charge, he decided to commit Horikiri, in his cave at 10 am, on July 6. The Banzai charge, was not the final horror witnessed on Saipan. As the Marines, advanced towards the northern tip of the island, hundreds of Japanese civilians committed mass suicide. Men, women, and children threw themselves from the island's northern cliffs. Americans attempted to stop them, using loudspeakers and Japanese-speaking interpreters, without much success. For the next two days, Americans fought a series of uncoordinated skirmishes, against small, disorganized groups of surviving Japanese troops. On July 8, the 4th Marine Division, have reached the northern tip of the island. On July 9, 
Marines secured Mirapi Point, a final objective on the Saipan, and the island was declared secured at 4.15 p.m. The victory on Saipan, would prove to be one, of the most important strategic moments, of the war in the Pacific theater, as the Japanese archipelago, was now within striking distance of American B-29 bombers, or as General Holland Smith said, it was the decisive battle of the Pacific offensive, it opened the way to the Japanese home islands. Four months after the battle, hundreds of B-29 bombers, from Saipan airfields, began regular bombing missions, against the Philippines and the Japanese mainland. It was also, the most costly battle to date, in the Pacific War. Out of 67,451 Americans, who landed on the island, 3,426 were killed, and 13,099 more were wounded. Among the wounded, was a future Hollywood actor, Lee Marvin. He served in I Company, 24th Marine Regiment, when he was wounded by Japanese mortar fire, during the assault on Mount Taipochow. In the end, almost the entire Japanese garrison, on the island, at least, 29,000, died. Besides soldiers, more than 1,000 Japanese civilians, committed suicide in the last days of the battle, some jumping from places, later named, Suicide Cliff and Banzai Cliff. However, the capture of Saipan, did not mean the end of the fighting for the Americans. Just three nautical miles, away to the south of Saipan, lay Tinian, and within days, the Marines would be, in action. Again.